talking to Brockwell Lay and a new layout build. This is going to be an exhibition layout. I'm using this ready uh, flat pack laser cut uh, baseboard from scalemodelscenery.co.uk. Well, I had intended to um, film a bit more of the build of the baseboard, but unfortunately I've had camera problems. Uh, so we fast forward a bit to an almost completed layout. Uh, you see the board here is about 113 centimetres long, which is quite small really, uh, about 23 centimetres wide, and there's just enough room for a little end gauge layout, which I've built here. Uh, I've yet to, there's a lot of details to go on it yet, but as you can see, it's a China clay depot and it's actually an end gauge, which um, I know some of you will say you don't like end gauge, and I, I haven't. I have previously had problems with Engage, but I really wanted to do a China Clay Depot. As you can see, this is a uh, sort of modern 80s, 90s China Clay Depot. And the only way I could do it uh, currently is in Engage with the sort of stock I wanted to run. So here we are. So this layout, and I've added the lighting bar at the front here, which is just two bits of wood with some cabinet lighting uh, from Wix underneath which I can probably show you um, which is a simple plug-in thing they're about 20 pounds I think and it also changes colour as well if you switch it off um, on again it sort of changes to different settings as a bluey light and a warm light and things like that um, which really sets the layout off quite nicely So it hasn't really got a name yet. Um, the track is the fine scale Pico, uh, which I think is code, code 55. Um, and there's only four points on the layout. Scratch built some buildings there, which is going to go off into a fiddle yard, which I have actually got built, but I haven't tested it yet. Still early days. I've ballasted the track um, with a fine ballast from Woodland Scenics which is like an ivory colour those buildings there are scratch built as well from photographs static grass of course um, this is WWS static I've weathered the rail sides and that was a concrete sleeper piece which I quite like the effect there's a lot of weathering, a lot of detail adding to do to this layout. But I've just been testing it and it does work quite well. Uh, little tweaks here and there are needed. I've just been adding some weight to these China clay wagons because they're really light. I also want to change the couplings because I hate the standard couplings which um, we use. The, um, what do you call them? Um, I can't remember what you call them. The standard but, um, couplers, they just look too big to me. So I might try some Buckeye type from Daypol. I was just experimenting with the, a couple on these China clay wagons. I think they're there. They're the plastic ones which came with Daypol wagons. They look a lot better but they don't work that well so I'm still experimenting. There's also the Hunt couplings which I might try. So exit the, exits the layout just here on the back here and then a fiddly yard is going to slot on the top there the transversa style which I've actually built which is down there I've yet to uh, get space to try that out but um, it's just going to get crocodile clips on the tracks and it should work fine it's a perfect little layout to fit in the back of a car and I can take this to exhibitions alongside my uh, double O Southern layout, which you might have seen, just a bit more modern. Something I've been wanting to do for quite a while. The China clay scene, because there's quite a few wagons available, and I'll run you those through the, some of the rolling stock which I've got so far. So these are the clay hoods. These are from Graham Farish, and these come with these nice plastic removable hoods. And they're the first thing I saw, which made me think of this layout. Behind there we also have the more modern CDAs from Pico, which is not going to focus on. There we go. I've only got two of those so far, but we'll get some more. Probably we need about four or five of them. I've got the excellent Silver Bullet, 
that's from Daypol. The lovely traffic services uh, polybulk wagon, that's uh, a Farish one. That's weathered up with some China clay dust. Um, what else have we got? Hang on. There's a Daypol cargo wagon which I've weathered up suitably, leaving some of these uh, panels exposed because I've seen quite a few in photographs where they just cleaned those parts so you can actually read where they're going and things. The rest of it's been weathered um, with the weathered wood from Phoenix Precision. It came as a two pack, which I didn't particularly want the second one, but I really wanted that one, but it came with that one, so I decided to graffiti that one up with some Brockwell graffiti. A Farish uh, Speedlink um, van, or the VDAs, I think they are. That was a second hand one, unboxed. That's uh, quite suitable as well. We used to bag up clay and run those into the China clay depots. And I have a little ground forest inspection saloon which I saw photographs of going down these branches and um, probably inspecting the tracks. So a little bit different. Locomotive wise I have Defiance in the classic grey livery uh, which was an experimental uh, freight version. It was the only one uh, they ran it on China clay um, trains a little bit around 1987 sort of time for a couple of years I think and then it was changed back into an express locomotive but it's always a favourite locomotive of mine I always liked that livery and I also drove that engine at Seven Valley a few years ago so uh, that's, I had to get that one that was the first one I got uh, so I have a Graham Farish Class 47 in the classic uh, rail freight grey that um, I've saw, seen some photographs of these on China Clay hoods as well so I particularly wanted that one that was second hand from rails these are also DCC chip, by the way, so you can tell by the lights being on that one. Um, not done a lot of DCC in the past, but I thought I'd give it a go with this NK layout. Because the tops of these locomotives are very easy to get off compared with double O. So you can put chips in them easy enough. That's one I only got yesterday. That was a second hand class 37. That's a 375, which I know didn't run on China clay, but I really wanted it for the chassis because over here I have... Uh, William Cookworthy uh, body from Backman's Spare Shop, so I'm probably going to put that on there um, because I couldn't get a full William Cookworthy, so I noticed they were selling the bodies off. And since I bought that, of course, somebody's got a second hand one, but it is the way. So it's just basically uh, two sidings and a run around loop and that is a fake siding which has sort of uh, been disconnected from the main line. Um, it makes it look like there's been a point taken out but it's a nice little feature. Um, so yeah that's it really, it's not, um, it's nothing spectacular but it's, uh, it should be quite fun to run up and down and um, I'm going to add loads and loads of details. This is a car park. I'm gonna put cars and lorry backs and trailers and things in there uh, and all sorts of little fun bits this is the bit I really like uh, when I get it to this stage and I really start doing some little cameo detail scenes I've already got some palettes uh, dotted around uh, and some 3d printed silos which I decided to use um, over there so lots of fun to be had um, Hopefully you'll see this at an exhibition at some point. So I'll leave you with some running shots um, and next time join me when I'll be doing a few more little things to this layout. Thanks for now. See you next time with Rockwell Lane. Like, subscribe. Bye bye.